Hi, this is Paul Turner with Venify. And in this session of PKI Bootcamp, we're going to talk about the anatomy of an attack, or what you could call the PKI kill chain. Every attacker, they have some objective. And in trying to achieve this objective, they need to look in their toolkit as to what tools that they have available to allow them to achieve that. Now, PKI is one of those tools that they've got. And frankly, it's become a very attractive tool. There's a variety of different attacks that they can leverage PKI to launch an attack. One of them is a man in the middle attack. The other one is eavesdropping. In future sessions, we're actually gonna go into details of how somebody would launch one of these attacks. At this, in this session, we'll stay at kind of a higher level. But both a man in the middle and an eavesdropping allows somebody to basically listen to a communication, pull out passwords and other data in that process. Another potential attack is unauthorized client authentication, where they can authenticate using a client certificate and act like or impersonate somebody else. If you're, as an organization, encrypting your com communications, like you often will with TLS, what an attacker can do is they can leverage that encrypted channel to cloak themselves because they can start doing SQL injection and cross-site scripting and those types of attacks. And because they're an encrypted session, your organization may not be monitoring that. And a lot of organizations haven't kept up with monitoring all of their encrypted uh, communications. The next one is signed malware, and this has been very, very broadly exploited, where, where an attacker will get a, a certificate that's trusted broadly, signed their uh, malware with it, and then it's broadly trusted as well. The final one, we haven't seen as many instances of it. It's somebody that's basically trusting digital signatures on documents or email to perform certain operations, and what an attacker would do is they'd say, hey, if I can forge a signature, I can cause them to do something that was unauthorized. Now, in order for somebody to launch one of these attacks, they need either a private key that they've stolen or compromised, or they need a rogue certificate or a certificate that's being trusted, though it's not a trustworthy certificate. And there's a variety of different enablers that will make these attacks possible. And these also we're gonna be digging into in future sessions. But they include, first of all, not even doing any encryption. For example, a lot of organizations, they're deploying new systems, but they can't keep up with the volume of certificates that they need to deploy across all their environments, especially for internal systems. So they may not be encrypting, which for example, will allow somebody to eavesdrop on their session. Some organizations may be using password-based authentication, including for automated processes. And this enables, for example, if an attacker is able to do a man-in-the-middle attack, they can intercept that password and then leverage it for future communications. CA compromise, a lot of attackers have really focused on attacking CAs, trying to leverage those attacks to get rogue certificates so that they can leverage those. And you can see as we go through the cert forgery as if somebody's taking and exploiting something like MD5 or SHA-1 to get a, uh, a rogue certificate. They may go in and steal a private key, and as you'll see in a separate session, we'll walk through how keys are managed today and the types of risks that they're uh, subjected to. But what you'll find is each one of these enablers enables one of these attacks, and you can see that there's quite a few different paths an attacker can leverage to jump from one of these bad practices or risks to a particular attack. First thing he can do is if he's able to, for example, get a rogue certificate, launch a man in the middle attack, he can start eavesdropping on communications and he can start seeing all the data that's going back and forth. This may be financial data or trade information, those sorts of things. Oftentimes, frankly, the data that they're really looking for is credentials. If they can get access to credentials, then they can start logging in and performing their own interactive operations. Now, eavesdropping gives you a similar type of methodology. This is where you'd have a private key that allows you to take an eavesdrop on an encrypted session. Once somebody has those credentials, then they can move to performing interactive operations. They can leverage those credentials to log in and leverage that access to perform or to get to one of these objectives that they were going after. If an attacker is, is able to get on the system, one of the key things that they're going to attempt to do is leverage that foothold onto that system to infect that system with some malware that they can use as a persistent uh, point on that system. And so going from one step to the next allows this attacker to go from interactive operations to ultimately having a persistent presence on that system that they can leverage in the future. Now there's a couple of other ways that somebody can jump to doing these inter interactive operations. First of all, 
if an attacker is cloaking themselves inside of an encrypted session, they can start working on, you know, leveraging uh, SQL injection or other types of attacks that you would typically be monitoring. They can leverage those and ultimately potentially compromise a particular account and start performing interactive operations. Or if they can get a client certificate that is trusted for a particular account, they can go ahead and start performing those interactive operations immediately. And again, work to achieve one of their goals over here or to infect that system. Now, if they're able to get a code signing certificate, sign their malware with that, then they're much more likely to be able to move directly to infecting a system. And there's a variety of steps that they need to go through there. As I mentioned with forging signatures on documents, that will enable them to cause some sort of an action. And again, we haven't seen a lot of use of this across different uh, environments, but as digital signatures are more broadly used, we'll see more of these types of attacks taking place. What this gives you a feel for is what an attacker is attempting to do and how they can leverage PKI to get to their goals. If you look at what an attacker is really trying to do with PKI and certificates, it's a really leveraging PKI and vulnerabilities to either get to performing interactive operations or into an infecting a system. Some organizations can inflict these types of things on themselves. They can engage in bad practices such as not managing their certificates well, having them expire, and then those bad practices basically can result in crippling their operations. What this basically gives you is an overall view of the types of bad situations that an organization can find themselves in and how PKI can contribute to either an attacker achieving that or frankly an organization falling into this trap themselves by engaging in bad management practices. That's the end of our overview of the anatomy of attack and a PKI kill chain. Thanks a bunch.